Permission for your calling. Oh, Julie, how very kind. Well, there's two, actually. A serious one and a bun fight. Good heavens. You're getting married in Westminster Abbey. Mm, that's the bun fight. The serious ones this evening. In the staff room, five kegs of beer, and no one's allowed to leave until they've been sick twice. Well, I shall <laughs> certainly look forward to that. <laughs> Have you heard anything? What? About who's taking over when Mr Britter scores. <sighs> I've been through his diary. I go through his pockets every morning. Nothing. It's not going to be easy, is it? Finding someone to fill the giant's shoes. Well, Gavin seems pretty keen. Gavin? Haven't you noticed? <laughs> the nose has been very close to the royal trousers lately. Gavin! <laughs> Forgive me, Julie. He's a nice enough lad. But he could never deal with an emergency the way that Mr Britter's does. Well, that's one thing going for him. You're not putting that on the wall, are you? I thought I needed something to help remember him by. Well, I don't think most of us will have any problem. See ya. Gavin. Featherly. I mean... Oh, Mr. Brittus, I just wanted to, uh... Oh, I thought I was leaving the running of the centre to my deputy managers today, Gavin. Oh, yes, I know, Mr. Brittus. I just wanted to tell oh, you... I am rather busy packing. I'll come back later. <laughs> all right, all right. What's the problem? Oh, it's not a problem, Mr. Brittus. I just wanted to let you know that the new queuing system's up and running. Queuing system? Yes, if you remember, Mr. Britters, you suggested that someone might like to look into increasing customer through flow and user friendliness at points of access. Right. Well, it's all set up in reception. And I've designed this form to quantify the delay quotient so that we can compare processing speeds with the old system. A form? Well done. Well, <laughs> two forms, actually, Mr. Britters. One for the customer and one self copier for staff use. This is very impressive stuff, Gavin Featherly. Oh, thank you, Mr. Brittus. I also wondered if a computer database might thank be useful. God, I found you, Mr. Brittus. <laughs> Colin. He'll never believe what's just turned up in the basement. I was just banging a nail in the stop, wall when... Colin. Stop right there. Very shortly, I'll be going to Brussels, Colin. I know, Mr. Brittus, and I'm very upset about it. And when I'm gone, Colin, who's going to solve your problems then? I don't know, Mr. Brittus. You're going to have to solve your problems on your own. So you may as well start getting used to it now. Well, I have a feeling in this particular... And let's not have any feelings, Colin. Let's just think the problem through and sort it out on our own, shall we? But if I make a mistake? That's how we learn, Colin, by making mistakes. I know, but... Go on, Colin, get out there and make a mistake. <laughs> now, Colin. Yes, Mr Brittus. Would you like me to go and see what it is, Mr Brittus? He's got to learn how to manage on his own, Gavin. Yes, I know, Mr. Brittis. I just thought that... I may have to pick up the pieces when he's done, but it's the only way people like Colin ever learn. Mr. Brittis? What is it, Colin? This thing I'm not allowed to mention, Mr. Brittis. Colin! Can I just give you the first letter? You're on your own, Colin. <laughs> right, Mr. Brittis. You are quite sure, Mr. Brittis? He's got to do it, Gavin. In three weeks' time, I won't be here, will I? Maybe in three weeks' time, Mr. Brittis, he'll have someone else he can come to. What? Well, I imagine in three weeks' time, Mr. Brittis, we'll have a new manager. Ah, oh, now that reminds me. Yes, Mr. Brittis. Could you ask Laura to come up and see me, please? Laura? Yes, and I can show her your new forms. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Helen. He hasn't got you doing the cleaning now, has he? We think it was the W.I. Craft Group. They had a bit of a lecture yesterday between their coats and proper hooks. Oh. Children getting all excited, are they? Sorry? About going to Brussels. Oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, they're not going. Not going? No, I thought it was probably best if they stayed here with me. You're not going either? No, well, it's very awkward taking them out of school, and Jonathan's only just gone back after being suspended, and, and there's the dog as well. Yes. And uh, a friend has very kindly offered to let us stay in their house. For seven years? Uh, it should be about that, yes. 
This friend wouldn't be John Rawlinson by any chance. Oh, Helen! Oh, Laurie's got everything I want. Huge house, lots of money. He's got a woman who comes in and cooks, someone else who cleans. And does Mr. Brittus know about this? Well, I... You haven't told him, have you? Helen, he's leaving in three weeks. I know, I know. That's why I'm here. You see, I wondered if it wasn't the sort of thing that might sound better coming from... Not a chance! <laughs> God, I'm Laurie likes you. It won't take a second. Helen, I'm not about to tell a man his wife is leaving him. Well, couldn't you just... No, say... you're on your own on this one. That way. I can't see until ten, can I? Why not? It takes half an hour for the pills to work. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, if I could ask you to use our queuing system. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Just that one of our deputy managers is testing a scheme to avoid delays and bad temper. If I could ask you to follow the arrows. Do I have to? Be a great help. <laughs> also, if you could take a number. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to Ripley Newtown Leisure Centre. Carol speaking. Yes, I would like and to... And your number is? Number one. <laughs> Good. How can I help you? Uh, my name is Trap. I'm from the Department of Social Services. Now, I'm acting on information we have received last week. Are you Mrs. Parkinson? That's right, yes. Yes, I'm investigating a report that children are being kept in drawers behind this desk. That's right, yes. Now, I know it doesn't sound very likely, but I have... <laughs> what did you say? I said yes. You're keeping three children in drawers behind the desk? Well, there's only one in the drawer at the moment. She's been having some rather bad nightmares and she's having a little lie down. And the others? Well, they're in the cupboard. I don't know what they're doing. Oh, Ben is watching the television and Emily is doing some colouring. Please mind the wall, sweetie. Uh, may I see the child in the drawer? Oh, yes, but you have to be quiet. She's a very tired little girl. You just leave her there in the dark? You can't put a light bulb in there. The heat cooks them. <laughs> not the sort of mistake you make twice, I can tell you. <laughs> the 100-pound Cripps Bessinger Mark VI, originally designed for deep ground penetration, was detonated by a timing mechanism that proved somewhat unreliable. <laughs> From June 1940, however, it was replaced by the Mark VII. Mark VII. Mark 7 was also armed with a trembler that would trigger the detonator if it was moved. <laughs> Laura, you wanted to see me, Mr. Brittus? Yes, if you'd like to take a seat, please, Laura. Now. Mr. Brittus, before you start, could I say something? Yes, of course. I know I probably shouldn't. I have no right. But, um. Yes? Well, you're leaving in three weeks' time, and I just thought I couldn't bear for you to go without you knowing how much you've meant to me. That's very kind of you, Laura. I'm not talking about the respect that we all feel for you. I love you, Mr. Brittus. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved you from the moment I first saw you, and I think I'll go on loving you for the rest of my life. I know it's useless. We're both married and we can never be together, but before you go, I... I just wanted to... <laughs> Laura! You wanted to see me, Mr. Brutus? Yes, if you'd like to take a seat, please, Laura. <laughs> Now. Mr. Brittus, before you start, could I say something? Yes, of course. <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't. 
I have no right, but... Go on, Laura, go on, whatever it is you want to say, say it. <laughs> it's about Helen. <laughs> My wife? Mr. Bittis, you probably don't realise this, but she's not very keen on going to Brussels. Right. I just thought I'd warn you. She'll be up here in a few minutes and she's very determined not to go. Right. That's it, is it? What? There wasn't anything else that you wanted to... to talk to me about. Mr. Bridges, do you hear what I'm saying to you? Your wife is planning to leave you. Unless you do something about it, you'll be going to Brussels alone and that's the last you'll see of her. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, Laurie, yes, I'll get onto it right away. to do that, please. I'll still be here when you get back. In seven years? Lots of couples have to separate at odd times in their lives, Gordon. I mean, look at people in the Navy. Yeah, people in the Navy have a reason for doing it, Helen. So do we. I've explained. Staying to look after the family dog is not what I call an explanation. <laughs> well, what else can we do with him? He can't live in Brussels, can he? This is his home. Come on, Helen. This is nothing to do with who looks after the dog. Yes, it is. You and I both know what's really going on here, Helen. This is about being my wife, isn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. About being the wife of a European commissioner. You are scared, aren't you? Scared? Living in official residences, entertaining presidents and prime ministers. You think you'll look stupid, don't you? But you are forgetting one thing, my sweet. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there to hold your hand, to show you how to behave, tell you what to do. I'd never let you look stupid. <laughs> hey, you've got another emergency. Julie, I thought I told you I wasn't to be disturbed. Downstairs, I'd hurry if I were you. Why can't people cope with things themselves? OK, if that's the way you want it, go for it, Linda. Uh, 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 hang on, hang on. What exactly are you planning to do with that implement? Smash a door down. Are you talking about leisure centre property? I don't think we have any choice, Mr Brittus. She's locked herself in. Who has? Carol. Yeah, and the man from the DSS says we've got to get her out. She's got a warrant. Two minutes, my darling. You can't stay in there forever. Open the door. <laughs> Look, Carol, listen to me. Mr. Trap here only wants to help. He's not going to do anything. What are you going to do exactly? Well, in the short term, I'm afraid I must take her children into care. Right. All he wants to do is take your children into care, Carol. <laughs> Carol, it's not so bad. Orphanages are very caring places these days. It's not bread and water and beatings anymore. It's not, is it? <laughs> We'd probably arrange for foster parents in the first instance. There you are, Carol. It'll be a foster home. Your children will go to nice people who'll be able to care for them properly. <laughs> that is no way to talk to your leisure centre manager. Anything wrong, Mr. It's Carol. She's locked herself in a cupboard again. Do we know why? Yeah, he's from the DSS. He's come to take her children away. What? All right, Carol. This is your last chance. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to have my centre immobilised by a lady locked in a cupboard. Linda, take the door down. Right, Miss Ridders. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> Mr Bitters, there are three small children in there. Well, what else can we do, Laura? Has anyone got a better idea? 
so unfair, Tim. It's just so unfair. Look, did he actually say he was going to give her the job? Well, he didn't have to, did he? It was written all over his face. Why? That's what I don't understand, Tim. I mean, what's so special about Laura? Well, she's efficient. People like her. She's done it before. No, I can't think. <laughs> At least if I was manager of this place, you wouldn't have to worry about me running off after a couple of months because I was pregnant. Touch wood, eh? <sighs> I could have got this place off the ground, Tim. I could have made things happen. I, I could have made the place hum. It's so unfair. And she doesn't hit people on the head with croquet balls. All right, everyone, I think we have to admit that Carol has defeated us on this occasion. Linda, if you'd like to take everyone through to the restroom, please. Yes, Mr. Brittus. Mr. Trap, I'll take you out to your car. Thank you for coming. Have a nice day. I'd better go back to my office and do some packing. I've got a lot to do. Hang on, I'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Brittus, I'm afraid there's been a bit of an accident. We're trying to get Carol out of a cupboard. Oh, sorry, Mr. Brittus. There's been an accident with a ball. We'll deal with it. Just do it quietly. Right, Mr. Brittus. Emergency services. What's happened to him? It's Colin. Look, she's never going to come out if everyone keeps talking, is she? Ambulance, please. He's quite badly hurt. Come with me, Julie. Oh, for goodness sake, someone start at a brass band, why don't you? Probably. What's going on, Tim? It's a head injury. Yes, it's, I think it's quite serious. <laughs> what? Thank you. It's Colin. He's been hit on the head. On the head? Well, get a first aid box, for goodness sake. <laughs> My goodness me, what happened? Uh, we think it was a cricket ball. There were two boys playing on the grass at the side, Mr Brittus. No, no, that is not allowed. Did he get their names? Uh, unfortunately, they were rather a long way away, Mr Brittus. Can we talk about this later, Mr Brittus? I think Colin should lie down. Well, into the restroom, please. Come on, in you go. Could you keep an eye on the cupboard, please? She may come out, you know, searching for food. Right, well done, Laura. Tim, newspapers under his head, please. Gavin, get outside, find out the names of the culprits. Julie, insurance forms, please. Colin, where's Colin? <laughs> you just stay right there, Colin, all right? Where do you want this, Mr. Brutus? What? I wondered where you wanted me to put this. Linda, I have one member of staff unconscious, another locked in a cupboard, and you want to know what to do with the croquet set. I only thought... That Linda, <laughs> it's not exactly a matter of life and death, is it? Put it down, come and help Tim. Yes, Mr. Brutus. How is he, Laura? Well, there's a lot of blood, but I don't think it's as bad as it looks. I think that's all we can do for the present. Right, let's get him out of the ambulance. <clears throat> Where are you going? If you remember, Mr. Brittis, you told the ambulance men to come round to the back in future. You thought it was better for morale. <laughs> get outside, get outside. Mrs. Parkinson, it, I don't like this any more than you do, then but I have... Please finish your orange and then it's time for music practice. Look, if you don't open up, I shall have to fetch the police. It would be a lot easier if you'd just come out and we could talk about it, huh? Please? She still hasn't come out, then. Sorry. Carol. Carol? Oh, no. Mr. Trapp, I know it may look strange keeping children in drawers. Singing? What? Is that the children? Yes. Yes, they normally practice about now. Oh, my grandmother used to sing this song to me when I was a boy in Salzburg. Did she? Oh, if my children could sing like that. Yes. I think you can open the door now. <laughs> Sorry, my darling. Had to find a couple of hooligans who attacked Colin with a cricket ball. Fortunately, Tim and Gavin identified them with no problem. Gordon, what's this? What? Ah. Uh, Is this our house? Is this where we're going to live? That's the official residence, my darling. Why didn't you tell me? I knew how you'd feel. And this? That's another one. We have two houses. Three, actually. All for us? They, they give us three houses? Don't worry, my darling. You'll have help. They provide servants. Never said anything about servants. I should have told you all about this ages ago. I just didn't want to burden you. 
You get a limousine as well. It will be a very different lifestyle. Not the happy, carefree existence we're used to at all. <laughs> Never mind. But it's not too late. If you don't want to go, you feel you can't cope, all you have to do is say, and that's it. I will post the relocation allowance right back. We won't go. End of story. This is money? Yes, but as I said, my darling, we don't have to take it. If you feel we can't manage, then we won't go. Oh, I think I'll manage. <laughs> Mind you, there is the children's education to worry about. Oh, I don't know. Going abroad might be rather good for them. And the dog? Oh, we could put him in kennels. For seven years? Sell him, then. <laughs> Ellen Brittus, you never cease to amaze me. The things you're prepared to do to support me. Can I cash this now? If you feel it's the right thing to do, my sweet. Oh, I do, Gordon, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'll come back. Oh, no, no, it's all right, Laura, I'm going. Going where? Brussels. Can't stop. Got to get to the bank before the shop shut. <laughs> what is it, Laura? Oh, it's Carol. She's been offered a job. A job? The DSS man wants her to teach his children music. He's offering free board and lodging a thousand a month and she wants to know should she take it. I can't believe it. What? I've been making decisions for that lady for the past five years. If she can't decide between going off with some total stranger or having her children looked after by responsible government officials, I give up. I'll tell her that. Uh, Laura, before you go, take a seat, will you please? Now... When I asked to see you this morning, it was because I wanted to give you something. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, all this for me. <laughs> what is it? This is my centre, Laura, and it's all for you. The confidential staff files, the blacklist, the 20-year plan, it's all yours. <sighs> Mr Brittus. Laura? I would like you to be the new manager of Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre. That is a wonderful offer, Mr Brittus. I hoped you'd think so. And I'm more flattered than I can say. It's just one problem. What? I can't accept. Why not? I'm going to America in five weeks' time. I haven't told anyone yet, but I'm expecting a baby. And Michael wants him to be born out there, and so does Michael's father. So, I'm leaving. Gavin, got a dead one here. OK, Julie, I'll get another. Right. Oh, good, thanks, Laura. Lovely party, Julie. <laughs> You don't leave a job like this every day, and I thought it was worth celebrating. I'm looking forward to the wedding. <gasps> so am I. Oh, it's like a dream come true, Laura. Marrying a man who owns a brewery. Every woman's fantasy, I'd say. <laughs> That's brilliant, right? As this fiancé, all I have to do is turn up, sign my name, and they put a couple of kegs in the boot. I think you're going to have a very happy marriage, Jewel. Mm, what I can remember of it. <laughs> and as well as the apartment in Brussels, of course, there's the house in Mayer <laughs> which is vast. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Luckily for me, the servants come down at weekends, though. And then this is the place on Lake Como. And this is yours as well? Yes, it's what they call a hunting lodge. Apparently our nearest neighbour's Queen Beatrice, when <laughs> she's not in the Netherlands. So when are you moving? Well, Gordon goes out in three weeks' time, but I have to wait a little longer until the house is sold. She only went on the market a couple of hours ago. Really? Yeah. Only Gavin and I will be looking for something bigger. I mean, the flat's a bit small uh, for a manager to do any entertaining. Well, you must come round, have a look. Oh, Laura. No hard feelings, eh? Sorry? About the, you know... Oh, the job! No, no, Gavin, congratulations. Oh, thanks. I mean, I know we were both aiming for the same... It would be fools if we didn't admit... Think you... nothing of it. The best man won. Oh, that's really nice of you to say so. Thanks. No, I mean, we'll only survive if we all pull together as a team. You know, I think it's going to be quite a challenge. Yes. <laughs> Can I make one suggestion? That's absolutely it. I want everyone to feel they can chip in with their own contributions at any time. <laughs> I think you should do something about the beer keg. Oh. Hello, everyone. Carol. Hello. This is Wilhelm. Who's taking a and music teacher to his children. Oh, well done, Carol. <laughs> You've made a very wise choice, Mr Trapp. It's Von Trapp, actually, Tim. Although he hasn't used the title since leaving Austria. His family weren't driven out by the Nazis, were they? Yes, they were. How did you know? <laughs> Just take a guess. If I could introduce him to Wilhelm's children, here's Lottie, who's ten, Herman, who's twelve, Vernon, who's thirteen, and Liesl, who's sixteen. 
Going on 70. <laughs> Come and have a drink, Carol. Fill <laughs> out. This way, everyone. Oh, it's <sighs> funny, isn't it? What? How everyone seems to have found a happy ending. Yeah, I suppose they have. Gavin gets to be manager, which means he can make Tim a deputy. Mr. Bitters is going to Brussels, and Mrs. Bitters seems very happy about it. Carol's found a family. You're going to live in Chicago with a millionaire. Billionaire, Linda. Everyone's got what they wanted. What about you? Well, as a matter of fact, I had some rather good news this morning. <gasps> Linda, you've been accepted for theological college. I'm sort of hoping to be the first woman Archbishop of Canterbury. That's wonderful. <laughs> Stop, everybody. Stop right there. What is it, Colin? Thank God I've found you all. There's going to be a terrible disaster. You're all going to die unless... Unless what? No, no, it's gone again. <laughs> Now write it down. <laughs> Anything in here to load, miss? I'm sorry? Anything to load for Mr. Britters to take down the ferry? Oh, no, no. Oh, yes. He might want to take his croquet set. Oh, right. <laughs> How's it going? Just wondered if you'd have time to pop into the party. Only it seems a shame everyone else is there. This one too, Gov. Am I making a terrible mistake? What? Going to Brussels, leaving this place. Well... You saw them today, they're like children. The smallest problem arises and who do they run to? Mr. Britters. What are they going to do when I'm not there? They'll manage. I worry about them, Laura. They're not just numbers on a payslip anymore. They're... They're my staff. You haven't changed your mind? Maybe the best thing I can do is get them to unload this van and stick everything back in the centre. You want this back indoors, eh? Mr. Britters, can I say something? Sure. I know it's difficult, but I think in any job, you eventually reach a point when, however successful you've been, it's time to move on. I'm not sure this is the time, Laura. I think it is, Mr. Britters. You have to go. Europe needs people like you. You think so? They have a dream there. 170 million people, all marching together towards a new dawn. It's a wonderful dream. Go to Brussels, Mr. Britus. It's made for people like you. <laughs> Take it to Brussels, Charlie. <laughs> 